Hey everybody, it's Libby with Gemini Homestead. I thought I'd share a quick little, another pickling recipe. This happens to be one of Buddy's favorite. It's pickled cabbage. So I figured I'd take y'all through some really short steps. This is probably one of the easiest picklings that you can do. But what I've got here, I hope y'all can see it. It's two heads of shredded cabbage, three carrots shredded, two large Vidalia sweet onions shredded, and I have one celery stalk, and it's minced. And that's all I've done so far. There's no salt, there's no nothing. All I've done is get it all shredded. Now, there's a story about this shredding. I thought I was gonna be cool and pull out my food processor that, uh, I don't know if Buddy got it for me or my daughter some time back. So I thought, well, you know, I'll pull it out and I'll make my video look a little bit more professional. So I got it all together and there's this little metal looking plate. It's got like little slots in it. So I got the book out, put that plate on. I said, I got this. Oh, I got this all right. I shoved that piece of cabbage down in there. And the next thing I know, that sucker shot back up, just like a pressure pot just like exploded. And I said, oh Lord Jesus, no. So there's no professional uh, cooking videos coming out of this kitchen, not with no fancy electronics. Obviously there's something that don't connect the dots when it comes to electronics. So the food processor got cleaned back up and it got stuck back in the cabinet. But I can't operate one of those one button ninjas. Now, that's pretty good. But I'll show you what I use to shred this with. Let me get over right here and show you my. You see this? That's my shredder. That's all I know is these hands. But hey, in an emergency, you do got hands. I'm sure there's a knife somewhere. I know Buddy keeps one. He took mine away. We wonder why. But I'm going to get this mixed up. It's two heads of cabbage, three uh, carrots, three carrots. Those are grated as well. Two Vidalia onions and one stalk of celery. Now, I minced the celery because I just don't like the texture of it. So all I've done is shred this, I'm mixing it, and I'll bring you back for the brown. It's the easiest thing to do. I could have probably made this video in two minutes, but I didn't get Miss Lippy's name for nothing. You know, I'm gonna have to talk for about three minutes of the five minute video. So I'll bring you back when I get the brine going on the stove and we'll move forward. So I'll be back. Okay, we got the brine going. The brine is four cups of sugar, four cups of vinegar, one cup of water, and a dash of celery seed. And I just take my celery seed and I just get a little pinch and that's it. You're gonna bring it to a bowl and then you're gonna take it off the heat. You're gonna bring it to room temperature. If you don't bring it to room temperature, it's gonna wilt that cabbage. And what you want is, it's, it's almost like a slaw consistency. It's got that little crunch to it. Kind of like kimchi. I tweak mine to kimchi. I don't put the fish oil and I don't put the uh, ginger in it. But I can do that if we want a kimchi. But what I've done over here is I've got pork jars. And I put a teaspoon of red pepper flakes in the bottom. And I would say to a quart two garlic cloves, but that's just strictly by choice. That's not something you have to do, but Buddy prefers it. This is one of his favorites. So it's four cups of sugar, four cups of vinegar, cup of water, and just a pinch of celery seed. Bring your brine up to a bowl, take it off the heat. Get your quart jars, make sure they're, they're clean, sterile, they're warm. Teaspoon of red pepper flakes, two garlic cloves per quart, that's strictly optional. Both of these is optional. He just happens to like it that way. And once the brine cools down, we're gonna fill the jars up with our slaw mix. And that was two heads of cabbage, three carrots, stock. 
celery and two Vidalia onions. And they were julienne or shredded. And then we're gonna fill the jars up, put the brine over the jars, and I'll bring you back when we get to the water bath. Okay, I've got them in the uh, water bath. I ended up with seven quarts. Of course, that's what fits the, uh, the water bath canner. I ended up making eight quarts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this one in the back of the ice box so Buddy don't find it and let it sit about two weeks. And then I'm gonna pull it out and say, here you go. So maybe he'll stay out of the pantry where I'm gonna put the other ones. But I ended up with a full quart bag of the cabbage and the onions and the carrots and that one stalk of celery. Tomorrow, I'm gonna skillet fry this in some baking grease and lard. Yes, I said baking grease and I said lard. We're gonna have some hot water cornbread and probably do like a little pork loin on the side. But that's gonna be supper tomorrow. You ain't never had fried cabbage in an iron skillet. You don't know what you're missing. And also, when I gave y'all the brine recipe, that's for the single batch. And I guess as y'all have seen, I don't do single batches when I, you know, do a video on canning. I always do a double batch. It just saves me time. You know, especially if I have the ingredients, I go ahead and do a double batch because I'm constantly in the kitchen doing something special this time of year. But while the canner's going, I wanted to show y'all this table. I don't know if y'all saw it when I had my big bowl of cabbage, but Buddy built me this. It's my portable workstation table. We use it at the holiday. We use it for everything, you know, if I need extra space. And I want to show y'all what this table does. When I said portable, I meant portable. Can y'all see that? Did y'all see that? Let me back up. There's my table. I wish he'd build me more of them. But he, he built this a couple of years back. I don't know exactly when. And I have used a mess out of it. Now, I'll bring you back, show you the results. But I wanted to give y'all a little bit of a suggestion. A lot of you may know this. But I set my quart jars, they were warm, in my water bath canner with the rack up and I let them sit there about a minute before I dropped them down and gave a little bit of water headspace, about an inch over the, the jars. And when it starts rippling, lightly rippling is when I time this and I time it for 20 minutes on a water bath. But when I get ready, when it's done and I take the lid off, I don't immediately pull my jars out, especially in the summertime with the AC going. I lift the rack up and I walk away for five minutes. Then I pull the jars out and set them on the counter to finish. Because a lot of times, I've seen this, I'm 54, so I've seen this a couple of times where what'll happen is when you pull that, them jars out of that hot water, depending on how cool it is in the environment that you're canning in, those jars can crack. So, that's why I do that. And especially last year, I was at the, uh, the Dollar General store and they had their mason jars. Yeah, they had the gold rings on them. I'm not a fan. But when you can get quart size mason jars for 10 cents, and I bought six of them, that's all they had. I'll use them because what I just used them for, this cabbage, pickling cabbage, it's not going to last. But it can go through a quart a week. So, if I let him have it in two to three weeks, it, six weeks time, they're gonna be gone anyway. So, but even if you're using the silver caps, I recommend to pull that rack up, let it sit five minutes, walk away. Then pull your jars out and set them down. You're less likely to crack that glass because it can happen going from hot to cold and we keep our AC on 71 in the daytime and 66 at bedtime. So it's, it's very cool here. But I'll bring you back when they get out. Okay, 
we are done. We ended up with, uh, let's see, six quarts water bath. And remember, I put one in the ice box and hid it from Buddy. So, um, they're a little hot still, but there you go. Let me tell y'all something. This is good. It's good on the side with peas and cornbread. It's good if you're making uh, dogs on the grill. It's just pickled cabbage. And like I said, when I gave y'all the brine ingredients and recipe, double that if you're making the batch that I made. Because if not, you can make another batch. If you want to just stick with the ingredients and the measurements that I gave you, you can just make single batches and that's fine. But like I said, I like to do double batches. So I am done with the pickling and the fermenting this week. I've just about smelt all the vinegar I want to smell this week. Next week, I'll move on to uh, peppers and I do a special pepper sauce. And I thought about not sharing. I said, you know, that's just not right. I'm gonna share my pepper sauce recipe. I normally pass out and share 50 jars a year with folks. So I try to put up 100 jars every summer. Yeah, I said 100 jars. My daughter, buddy, everybody just sits there and just eats it with a fork. It's, um, it's just something I came up with about 20 years ago. Everybody likes it. And I'll share it with y'all next week. But I'm tired. I think it's 8.30. Need a shower. 4.30 comes early in the morning. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, send me an email. I'll be more than happy to answer them. But until next time, God bless.